Yu-Gi-Oh! is a trading card game we love, but is it worth the investment we make into it sometimes? In this series, both Sparkman and myself discuss whether a new set to be released or older set is treasure or trash. We give our opinions on different areas of the set, whether it be reprints, money cards, and the different archetypes that are new and the ones that are getting support. But with the economy experiencing inflation and that trickling down to the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, can the demand for Yu-Gi-Oh hold up with the surge in price for products? What's up, everybody? We are back with another treasure or trash. But yeah, as you can see on our screen here, we are going back in time with Hot Shot Frontier Sparkman hitting you with the Rise of the Duelist booster box and Rise of the Duelist set in general. So uh, yeah, I mean, Hot Shot, how do you feel about this set? This set was amazing. Um, yeah. This set came out. Was it 2020 or was it, it was 2020, I believe. I think so. And uh, this was like, I think the pandemic had just started or it was a little before. Woo! And, you know, a lot of vendors were having issues actually getting product back, like getting a lot of product. So this set was uh, heavily affected by that. Yeah. Plus this set was actually very, very amazing. You know, you had uh, Triple Tactics Talents, you had Forbidden Droplet, uh, those two cards were above 100 for so long because you know those cards are just meta impactful and uh we had the dogmatica support which was really used uh throughout the game until you know it was replaced later on like every secret rare for the most part was a really good secret rare that's yep. why this set was amazing um but and starting off oh, i just want to yeah, touch on one thing when you said that this basically came out during the pandemic we also saw a lot of influx of people joining back into Yu-Gi-Oh! So that also could cause the influx of why card prices were going up because more people were getting back into sure. the game as well because when you're inside, you got nothing better to do but go back to an old game like Yu-Gi-Oh! That's true, and they see this set that is the latest set and they have to, you know, they buy into it and then mm -hmm. it's just prices spiked, you know? Yep. But um, going on first to the Starlights, there were only four, you know, not like uh, 2023, 2022, and now that we have multiple, multiple Starlights per set. <laughs> But, uh, sorry, five. There were five Starlights. I kind of forgot about the fifth one a little bit, but four um, <laughs> Starlights. We have Triple Tactics Talents that still holds up its price for so long. Um, it just looks amazing in person. Um, I've seen it in person. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have Domaka Ecclesia, the Virtuous. Another really, really cool Starlight um, that got reprinted. Well, that got printed as a Starlight here. And then we have DD Crow that everyone was really happy about. Um, yeah. that just kind of showed that shine, and I think Sparkman, I think you and I know someone who owns three of them. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Yeah, me too. Well, maybe we'll place his name over here. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, and he's a big baller. Okay, yep. but <laughs> <laughs> moving on, we have a uh, win the wind charmer. Um, I think that this was like a less popular charmer in terms of like uh, the link versions of the charmers. Partly, I, okay. I, because the, the Link ones, you know, they were more used in the metagame. These were kind of more like specifically used in certain decks. And gotcha. I think at that point, you know, I did, it's the, the prices were very low. But uh, moving on to uh, the last one, because there is a fifth one Gaia oh, the Magical the Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Gaia the Magical Knight of Dragons, 115 bucks. Um, you know, nothing really much to say. It was just the art of the set. It made the yeah. art, the, the set look really cool, but it just wasn't, uh, people didn't really want to invest in it long-term. That's that's basically it. Unfortunately. Uh, I think the support was really cool though. You know, seeing like Yugi support, you know, mm -hmm. type of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, like I said, Triple Taxes Talents, TDT, no, TTT, and uh, Forbidden <laughs> Droplet. Again, we're just so high up um, for the meta. They were above 100. People were like, oh, which was going to go higher, which was going to go higher. Then uh, Triple Tactics Talents got its reprint in the 20, 2021 Megaton. Yeah. Brought the price down finally. Forbidden Droplet got that ultimate rare in, I want to say, OTS 17, 16. I'm not exactly yeah. sure which Bro one. One of those, yeah. But, yeah, that brought its price a little bit down. But then finally, uh, that put the nail on the coffin was the ultra rare reprint and uh man, what's that set called i keep forgetting it uh duels from the deep that that's that we have the best box right here in front of us ladies and gentlemen we have the best box of 2022 best box of 2022 right here the duels from the deep all right so all right why are you recording me saying that all right all right all right listen i don't need more than one platform here making me say this all right And then it got another reprint in the 2022 Megatons. But, you know, really good cards. 
Yeah. Um, and it's, it's great to look back at the set to see the amazing things we have in here. Sure. But uh, moving on, we have Fall of Albaz. It got hype. It was like around 30 bucks at the time when it didn't have a reprint because Despia was doing really, really well. And that was the amazing. only copy. Yeah. yeah. Um, then we have Nadir Servant, which was above 70 bucks until it got that reprint. Yep. Crazy. Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon, again, really good for uh, Pendulum support. Uh, that card was really up until it got an eventual ultra rare reprint in the 2021 Megatons. And then, again, just skipping all the Dogmatic cards because, again, those were like the really, really like that was the engine they used during that time. Like yeah. everyone was splashing a Dogmatica engine, which was really great. Um, Titanic Clad, the Ash Dragon was really cool. Uh, it was a one of though, and again, it was kind of like iffy if you used it or not. So it wasn't as popular as the other secret rares. But of course, we have Chaos Ruler, the Chaotic and Magical Dragon, because the ability to just, you know, go into your deck and just, I mean, you know, just see five cards. Like, it was just really, really <laughs> OP. Like, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> as being a light or dark monster, saying the rest of the grave, like, I think it did get a random ban. I think it was two banless ago. Well, it was just kind of okay, but I mean, I can see why it's it it is an amazing card, you know, and it gets it itself back. So, what can you do? But um, then we move on to the Ancient Warriors Oath, Double Dragon Lords. This card still does not have a reprint, and it's an amazing card, right, Sparkman? Sure. No, yeah. and we have the Koki Miru Supplier. Uh, this card was used in Emancipators. It did eventually get a reprint um, from the recent Battle of Legends set. But uh, this card just dropped like 14 bucks when it didn't have a reprint. Uh, moving on, though, last we have the Don't Gaia like Fierce Don't. Knight Origin. <laughs> Don't like Quacky uh, Mirrors. Yeah, he doesn't like Quacky Mirrors. Uh, anyway, so yeah. the Gaia the Fierce Knight, uh, that was just the sneak peek promo. Yeah. That's why it's like 250 uh, really. Or actually, no, actually, no, no. This is just the Ultra Rare for the set. But it's still but, support again, for that. For yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have the Raid Raptor Arsenal Falcons for three dollars. It used to be maybe four bucks, but uh, the Statue of Wind just got banned on the recent ban list, so this is going to go low. I don't think people are going to really use this anymore. Yay! Um, yeah. And then we have Infernal Noble Knights, which, if you guys remember, which was like a crazy deck uh, before Link Cross got banned, unfortunately. But um, yeah, you know, they're just there. It's they're pretty cheap. You can't really do too much with the deck now, unfortunately. Uh, moving on. Animus and Paris Friends. Okay, I'm sorry. This was actually the worst secret. This was actually a terrible secret. And it, even Animus and didn't use this card. It, it was... You seem very animated about that one. Did you pull that? All right, so we're going to move on. Um, oh, before I forget, Melfi's made their appearance in this set, finally. I think it was the Legendary Duelist Season 1 that had a Melfi, the original Melfi normal monster as like a preview for the next set, which is Rise of the Duelist. And then gotcha. Melfi's kind of made that huge uh, comeback here, right? We have Dragon Mate support, there was Rika Queen, Shrena, Rika support, more you know, Dalmatica. Punishment was a really good card, a good staple. Ice Dragon's Prison used to be a $30 card. Yeah, that was, a, that was a hitter. That was crazy. It was like, what, seven yeah. bucks? I was like, ah, I'm good. Went to 30, I'm like, oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> but yeah. uh, finally, we have Shadal Schism. Mm -hmm. uh, this card was like 10 15 bucks. Really good <clears> for uh, Shadals when you uh, summon something and then it can just send something from your opponent's side of the field. Really okay. strong effect. And guys, that's pretty much it. I mean, again, I think there are a lot of notable stuff like the Fluffle um, and Fright for type of um, support with yeah. Edge and Scythe and the Whale, which is a really good card that can just keep chaining itself. But uh, Sparkman, do you have anything else to add? I mean, honestly, this, this set really aged well. Like it aged really, yeah. really well. Um, no matter how many reprints a lot of these cards got, like Forbidden Droplet or even Triple Tax Talent, these cards still are holding a good price point at around the $30 range. So it doesn't even matter how many times it got reprinted. Like the original set of the card is holding not like amazing value. Like it's actually kind of nutty. Uh, Starlights were amazing as well. I mean, DD Crow and Triple Tax Talent do their job in making this set like hold a lot of value as well. And again, there's a lot of cards in here that maybe still not even not use as much as today, but still use primarily like here and there. Um, mm -hmm. So I do think it's a good set. Um, I think it aged well and nothing but good things to say about it. Yeah. 
And you know, I, the thing too is like, uh, if we ever get, if any of these cars become like prismatic secret rares, then the original price from this set will drop. Like from, uh, that yeah. card will drop. Like if uh, Forbidden Droplet didn't get that ultra, he got like a prismatic secret rare, then it would definitely drop. Yeah. But see, a lot of them are just kind of like the highest card, like the, the in terms of like, it's a secret rare. So it's still holding up that price point if yeah. you want to get that and upgrade your, whatever your current card to like this type of rarity, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, personally, I think like, Sealed is cool because at least with main core sets, you can still uh, pull a Starlight Rare, and that's what really holds up that value because it could have a Starlight Rare, you know? Without that, it would definitely be a lot less um, strong. Totally agree. Totally agree. What are you um, giving it a rating, huh? Let's hear me, it. Oh, I'm going to rate it like a 15 out of 10. Oh, baby. I don't even have to, I don't even have to think about that one. That's, that's amazing. a 15 out of 10. That is amazing. It it just, it was the, the, the right, timing right. was crazy. You know, the delays, it was insane. Uh, I got a few boxes. I had pulled a few of these cards. I pulled a play set of Triple Tactics Talent and one Forbidden Droplet. Like, I, I had really enjoyed this set. This set, this set did me right. Okay, it did me right. Okay, well, I'm giving it a 9.9999999. Because I do believe it almost hits a 10, but it's not there. It's just not there. So I don't disagree with your rating. Uh, I just will say, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Merlik. I talked to him. I don't know why he, he didn't. <laughs> I used to be still doing that. But uh, anyway, sorry. I had something in my mind there. <laughs> but why do you feel like it doesn't deserve a perfect score? No, it's just the next closest thing to a 10. I just wanted to annoy Malik, so that's why I had him give it 9.999. But um, <laughs> one of our viewers don't like us. Don't like me giving 9.93. They don't like doing that. But, you know, I got to I gotta continue the trend. But if you want, I'll give it a 10.2. You know, that person sparked in this. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah. So that's, no, it's, that's a, it's a great set. I, 100, 100 out of 10. 100 out of 10. It's amazing. It's it's definitely a great set. A lot of great style, Starlight style. Like, I can't even speak these days. Starlights. Um, <laughs> a lot of good secret rares as well. But um, yeah, it, like I said, hold great value. And um, yeah. one of the sets that just age really, really well. And without yeah. a doubt, I don't even you need to hear Treasure Trash. It's a treasure. I mean, come treasure. on. Man. Treasure, guys. Absolute yeah. treasure. Yeah. I don't think we can really debate much about that. Um, but you know, I kind of like this. I like going back in time and seeing like, uh, reviewing yeah. a past set because it kind of brings back a lot of warm memories, sure. uh, you know, until we get to a set that I get, did me very wrong, then I'm going to be very upset. Oh, I'll get that like a one, but <laughs> I had fun uh, reviewing this with you, Sparkman. Um, yep. go ahead and uh, take us away. Okay, everybody. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video from your truly Sparkman and Hot Truck Runs here. We'll catch you in the next one. Hope you enjoy Treasure Trash, and we'll be doing many more to come. Peace out, and Peace. see you later.